It has been a year since Larry Nasser was convicted for sexually violating young women. Young women who are truly extraordinary, the pride of our nation. Nasser was the USA gymnastics doctor. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Ali Raisman was one of his victims. She was the captain of the USA gymnastics team in 2012 and 2016, and is best known for her dazzling floor routines. So far, more than 330 victims have come forward. That's more than the number of victims for Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby combined, making this perhaps the largest hashtag MeToo story to date. After spending months deliberating about whether or not to speak out, the 24-year-old captain broke her silence. The tables have turned, Larry. We are here, we have our voices, and we are not going anywhere. Ali Raisman delivered a heroic message about a system that had failed women, revealing that not only had she been abused by Nasser, but that he had assaulted her during the 2012 London Olympic Games. How are you? Hi, good, how are you? Hello, everyone. Hi. Today, we explore the complex world of sports in the Me Too era through her eyes. Ali. I want to talk about battles because it's been a year since you testified against Dr. Mm -hmm. Nasser. The walk of carriage, though, is easier talked about. It's harder to walk, you know, and I want to understand what are the things that was going on actually inside you? Were you afraid? You know, when I first decided to come forward in November of 2017, I was so nervous. I had actually spoken out in August of 2017 about the way that USA Gymnastics was handling things, I didn't agree with it, and I felt like they were sweeping things under the rug. But I didn't share my story yet publicly. I had reported my abuse um, in 2015, but I wasn't ready for the whole entire world to know. What got you to report your abuse? Because what I understand is that there is so, the part of the training, authority plays a major role, and it's about mm -hmm. listening to orders. So what got you to say, no, 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 this mm -hmm. is it, I have to report this? Well, I, I find, you know, when I look back now, you know, it's just, it's very, very, abuse can be very, very confusing. And I've learned since, um, you know, I've had a lot of time to reflect and I'm still coping with everything. I'm still learning new information. I'm still learning about myself. But when I was a kid, it never, ever occurred to me that a doctor could be misusing their power. And so I think over the years, I felt very uncomfortable and um, I was very confused, but then me and my teammates and we would discuss it. We would always say, there, there's no way a doctor would be hurting us. And, you know, this doctor is the Olympic doctor. Everyone says nice things about him. I felt guilty for thinking badly of him. I didn't understand that sexual abuse could happen to me. I didn't understand it was so common. I didn't realize that 90% of the time child sexual abuse occurs, it's with a trusted adult. And 10% of the time, it's with a stranger. So while stranger danger is extremely important to talk about, it's 10% of the time. The graphic details of Nasser's abuse are disturbing. He would often treat the young women alone in their hotel rooms during competitions. He would insert his fingers in their vaginas, sometimes without gloves, later claiming that it was part of his medical procedure. I was very confused because he would also give me gifts. So I just thought, he's a doctor, he's giving me gifts. I felt guilty for thinking anything bad about him. So I, I never assumed something was wrong. And I went inside and I talked to my mom about it. And thankfully, my mom was so supportive and she said, this isn't right. And, uh, you know, we told USA Gymnastics, we reported it to USA Gymnastics. And, you know, we, we found out years later that they did not take the proper actions, even though they, they told us that the FBI would handle it and that the FBI already knew. There's so many pieces to the puzzle that we don't even know. There's so many people in high positions of power and authority that actually knew about it and looked the other way and covered it up. Um, so we, I was under the impression that the authorities already knew about it and everything, and so it was very confusing. And um, it's been really hard for me uh, since then. I feel like every day I find out new information about, oh, this policeman also knew about it, or this member of the FBI knew about it, and nothing mm -hmm. happened. So it's really, it's scary. To the women, both those who chose to testify and those who did not, 
who have demonstrated tremendous bravery, poise, and strength in the most difficult circumstances imaginable, let me say this. The Olympic system failed you, and we are so incredibly sorry. Allegations against Larry Nasser were first made in 1997 and continued until he was finally fired from Michigan State University in 2016. USA Gymnastics and Michigan State University, where Nasser worked, have both come under fire for failing to protect young athletes. Do you feel betrayed? Yes, I mean, Because very. the betrayal is not only by him, but by the whole system around, right? It's honestly very scary to think about how many adults knew about it and how many adults didn't care. Um, but it's also, it's so much bigger than me. It's so much bigger than the gymnastics world. It's abuse is so widespread. It's horrible how uh, common it is. I mean, the first reported incident of abuse of our abuser was in 1997. So if in 1997, if, you know, if whoever the person was that the abuse was reported to, if they had taken that report seriously and then they put our abuser in jail, I and so many others would have never, ever met him. In 2018, the victims of Larry Nasser were honored at the Excellence in Sports Performance Yearly Awards. 140 of them stood on stage. Ali Raisman delivered the main address. All we needed was one adult to have the integrity to stand between us and Larry Nasser. 1997 through uh, 2016, there were so many reports. It was just, it's mind boggling and scary how many people knew about it and looked the other way, but that's more of the reason why, you know, to keep speaking up, to let people know that unfortunately, you know, people might not always listen to you or believe you when you come forward, but my best advice, as hard as it is, to not stop until you get the answers that you deserve because you know your story and don't let anybody tell you that you're lying or that, um, that you're making it up because nobody knows your truth like you do. Well, there's so, much, so many things that you actually said and I want to deconstruct it by one is, a girl who's 12 years old, whose dream is to win the gold medal, right? And she may be going through something right now. She, like, that's the whole compromise that goes on. Not compromise, like the fear. If I report, I mean, you know, my, my chance of getting training or getting the coach or whatever that may be jeopardized. How do you, what's your message to her? I reported my abuse before the 2016 Olympic Games. I still made the Olympic team. I still am... I'm getting a lot of support. I'm still getting to do opportunities. But the best advice I can give is if you share your story to somebody and they don't believe you or they threaten you or there's, you know, there's repercussions, that person who is mistreating you and um, because the enablers or the people that don't believe you are just as bad as the abusers themselves. They're complicit. Yes, and, and they're, they're perpetuating the abuse. I'm hoping, you know, because that the days of people reporting their abuse and their in their being mistreated and their being um, the repercussions that there should not be for standing up and speaking your truth, I'm really hoping that those days are over. Saying just be quiet or they didn't mean it or maybe you misunderstood that is wrong and it's unacceptable. That's what you were told. Yeah, I Some think we. Were, things, I think yeah. um, a lot of us were told he's a doctor. Who are you to question a doctor? And I think those things, as a victim, it makes you feel guilty. Like, maybe, well, maybe I am wrong then if it's a doctor, but you know what's wrong and what's right. And we may never know how many people there are. I still know some people that have not come forward yet because they're still too nervous to. And people don't have to come forward publicly. Everybody chooses their whatever they feel comfortable with. But, you know, my best advice, and I wish... I had known this when I was younger, I wish somebody told me this, is if it doesn't feel right, then it's not right. And people need to understand that just because all the adults around you are saying that this adult is a wonderful person, somebody can be very nice to you and then can be abusive to somebody else. Right. You don't know, you don't know what happened behind those closed doors. And I wish that, you know, I see a lot in the Me Too movement, I wish that instead of people jumping to conclusions and saying this is made up, and I always want to ask that person, do you even know, either do you even know the survivor or the abuser, and were you in the room when it happened? No, so then maybe you shouldn't say anything. When I have been betrayed in my life, and I have, it was very confusing because I couldn't mm -hmm. understand who should I believe. 
do you think that impacted the way you mm. relate to people? I find, you know, when I um, go out in the street or I'm at the airport or the grocery store, whatever it is, I, people are so supportive and I'm so grateful for that. And people share their stories with me. And I can't tell you how many people share their stories of being survivors of sexual assault, including men. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad how common it is. And so I think that for me was really hard because I wanted to help every single person. Yeah. It's devastating how many people can relate, but it's also scary. It's also overwhelming, you know, because you don't know how to help. I think sometimes people forget I am coping with it too. Yes. And yeah. sometimes people will go into graphic detail and I find when I'm honest with them and let them know I'm still struggling, I feel like they feel more connected to me. Um, it's because it's honest, it's authentic, yes. right? Yes, I, I right. used to get nervous if I yeah. told somebody, if you go in graphic detail, it, it's really hard for me. I, I was nervous they were gonna be mad at me and then tweet that Ali Raisman is such a horrible person, but I, I just, I'm just being honest and I, I, can't, I can't handle it. I can like, I feel like I can feel um, the pain because I, I know I what I can relate. I don't yeah. know exactly what they've been through, but it yeah. is very, it's hard. Some days when you have literally seven different people in an hour at the airport tell you that they were assaulted, it's really hard to think, wow, we live in such a peaceful and great world. I try to focus on the good, but it's also important. We have to focus on some of the negative things because there needs to be change. How far are you in your path of healing? I feel like from a year ago, I'm doing, I'm in such a better place. I still feel like I'm really drained and exhausted a lot of the time, so I'm just really working on that. I've been trying to eat really healthy and trying to start working out a little bit more. And I've been trying to meditate and really take time for myself every single day. But every day is different, and I find writing in a journal really helps. I'm very passionate about um, helping other people, but I can't do that if I'm not taking care of myself. So it is, it takes a toll on me. USA Gymnastics, where is the honesty? Where is the transparency? Has the system changed? No. You manipulated me into thinking you were the good guy. In January of last year, 156 women confronted their abuser, Larry Nasser. You need to look at me and listen. I only hope that when you get a chance to speak, you tell us who knew what and when they knew it. The judge compelled him to sit in the courtroom through seven days of testimony. You lied to me and manipulated me to think that when you treated me, you were closing your eyes because you had been working hard when you were really touching me, an innocent child, to pleasure yourself. It was a landmark moment of the Me Too era, and Nasser became the first high-profile abuser to be put behind bars. He was sentenced to a term of 40 to 175 years in prison. I can only talk about my journey, which is I was, I led with anger. And then eventually I started, like the, that anger was eating me as well. Mm -hmm. And so I actually started to go in the path of healing. What's the role of anger in your mm -hmm. life right now? That's a very good question. I, you know, I feel like I, I totally agree with you when you're coming from anger, but you know, there. I think it's also okay to be angry because it is so wrong what yes. happened and it's unacceptable. And I think as women, we're always told that you just have to be very nice and sweet and you can't be angry. And you know, I think as women too, people are like, we get it, just stop talking. We get it, he's in jail, but you they don't understand. You actually have people telling you that? Yeah, it's some people you know, that I used to be close with in the gymnastics world are just like, they don't understand why the need to keep speaking out. I've learned that um, it's okay to get your energy out, whether you're screaming into your pillow or hitting your pillow. That has been so therapeutic boxing. for me. Boxing. I go to boxing, I boxing and boxing I just too. like, just You hit. know, I wish that there was sort of more of conversation about it's okay to get angry, but it's not okay to hurt somebody else. Because the people, the worst abusers in the world, they're in pain too and it's they're hurting and it doesn't make it okay what they do. But the reality is, is that they're really suffering. And so they need help more than probably a lot of people than we realize. True. There's just not enough conversation about it. About anger generally, because it's yes. constructive anger, which is what you did. So the whole thing about Me Too right now is people are wondering, 
has it really led to systematic system change, institutional change? There's so many of them that still aren't even exactly. in prison. It's crazy. Exactly. It's just, you. I hear people's stories and, and I hear these horrible stories and they're just, abusers are just still, you know, working and it's like they get rehired for a new job. It's just unbelievable. I don't, I don't think there's been close to enough change. I think it's incredible how much has happened in the last year and the topic of conversation at the dinner table at the grocery store, I'll be in one of the aisles and somebody will say, you're the first person that I told ever in my abuse happened 50 years ago. And so that's a big shift in our culture that people are starting to talk about it and feel comfortable to share their story because so many you know, older women have told me when they were younger, it was just, it was not discussed. And if they brought it up, it was, it was brushed aside and it was not to be brought up again, which is terrible. What I have a really big problem is, is with the victim shaming. The reality is, is that the statistics of um, child abuse is one in four girls and one in six boys for child sexual abuse. And then for women, um, sexual assault is one in five women. And those are just people that speak up and many people don't speak up because they're afraid of being victim shamed. True. And in the world, actually globally, it's one in three women who wow. are abused. USA Gymnastics, where is the honesty? Where is the transparency? Why must the manipulation continue? Neither USA Gymnastics nor the USOC have reached out to express sympathy or even offer support. Not even to ask, how did this happen? What do you think we can do to help? You're taking on the system. Has the system changed itself? No. What needs to be changed? Well, I just think that this says so much, but after so many years, I mean, again, the first reported, abu uh, the first reported incident of abuse was in 1997 for our abuser. I reported my abuse in 2015 before the 2016 Olympics, and there still has not been a full independent investigation. And that to me just speaks volumes to our culture of the fact that I just think that there's not enough uh, I don't know the right word, but I just feel like um, child, child sexual abuse and women being abused or sexually assaulted is at the bottom of the list for certain law enforcement and authorities. Not all of them. There are some law enforcement that do amazing, amazing things and certain authorities that do great things, but I feel sometimes it's at the bottom of the list. Within sports and within USA Gymnastics, it's rigorous, it's, it's almost abusive, the, like the way the training is, right? Does that need to change? I think that the, one of the most important things is that while my teammates and I were training, um, there needed to be a lot more uh, conversation and a lot more, there was way too much of a power dynamic and we didn't feel, uh, we didn't feel comfortable speaking up and saying we were really tired or our foot hurt or something like that. And I think that there was so much pressure to win. USA Gymnastics has been successful for years and years. And you know, you always felt like if you didn't perform at your absolute best, if you weren't perfect, then you were gonna be replaced. And so you kind of felt like you were like just a robot trying to be perfect all the time. And you know, I think there needs to be more conversation about feeling telling all of these young boys and girls and these athletes that you are more than just your sport. Not everybody is going to grow up to be an Olympic champion. Not everyone's going to grow up to be an NHL player or an NFL player, and that's okay. And the most important thing is that you're a good person. If you're a good athlete, but you're not a good person, then that's, that's not cool. It's very, very important to be a good person and to be kind and to be a good teammate. And I think that most people that enter in sports are not going to be as successful as they wanted to or they dreamed of. And I think there needs to be more conversation about supporting kids so that they understand if you don't win, that's okay. Your life will go on. Sports is not the end of the world. There's other important things in life. And just your self-worth shouldn't be based off of how you do at a competition. After the allegations against Larry Nasser became public in 2016, USA Gymnastics fired several high-ranking officials for mismanagement. The former head Steve Penny was also criminally charged for tampering with evidence. Would you ever consider becoming or running for the president of USA Gymnastics? Uh, 
That's very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I can make more change outside of the sport. I want to be involved in uh, creating education for every single sport. Uh, and I think this problem is bigger than just gymnastics. I want to be involved in gymnastics. I always will be. But my goal is to, my program that I work with, Darkness to Light, it's the Flip the Switch campaign um, dot org. It's a, a free program. It's a two-hour program to educate adults to prevent child sexual abuse. And I'm hoping that one day that will be mandated in every single sport because every single adult should be educated to prevent child sexual abuse. And I think in, if that starts to happen, there's more education, I think that less children will be abused. How about 2020 Olympics? Any plans for that? Uh, right now, I'm just focusing on taking care of myself. And uh, the last couple of years have been really draining. I don't even know if I've taken the proper time to rest after the 2016 Olympics. So I'm just working on taking care of myself and just having fun and, and enjoying my life. The boys in my class were intimidated by me because I would beat them at sports. Since Raisman made the decision to testify just over a year ago, she's taken a break from gymnastics and is working on advertising campaigns for body positivity. She posed nude for a shoot with Sports Illustrated to raise awareness about sexual abuse and is a spokesperson for Aries' real role model campaign that focuses on highlighting women of all different sizes and backgrounds. Is that your new cause? Uh, the whole idea of how women are portrayed in, in the media? You know, I've been an advocate for body positivity for a very long time, and I've really tried to speak out about things that I believe in. Um, you know, when I was younger, when I was in fifth grade, the boys in my class would make fun of me. They told me that my muscles were disgusting. And I, for a really long time, thought that because I was really strong that I wasn't feminine or girly, and I felt really, really self-conscious. And when I would go to gymnastics, my muscles made me very good at my sport, but then at school I felt really embarrassed. And, you know, of course now when I look back, I wish that I didn't worry about what people thought. Um, but, I mean, I'm human, just as many people are. Um, but I think it's so important um, for schools and everybody to educate students and just educate everyone, kids and adults, to be kind to each other. There's no reason that anybody needs to be shaming other people's bodies. But I also think that the boys in my class didn't like they were intimidated by me because I would beat them at sports and I would do, when we would do gym class and we would have competitions and um, I think I still have the school record for the most pull-ups. And so the boys in my class wow. didn't like that. And, um, you know, I wish that the teachers would have said that girls can be better at boys than sports and you have to be supportive of each other. Um, but, you know, they, I'm glad that they didn't intimidate me enough to quit my sport because that would have been a shame. But I, I have to imagine that does happen to other people and that's not acceptable. That is very true and we still deal with it. I mean, as an adult woman, I still mm -hmm. have this whole issue and it's a battle. If you are to talk to your younger self, when you first felt something's <clears throat> wrong, what would you tell your younger self? Hmm. Uh, I mean, if I could, I don't know. I think it's hard to think like that because you can't go back in time. Right. Um, but, but the message is for younger women as well. I guess I would just say to trust your gut and, you know, to always trust your instinct and you know your truth better than anybody else. A lot of people are saying it's young woman who's going to save the world. Do you feel there's too much pressure and it's sort of unfair that, you know, that it's all on you to change the world? I feel very grateful that we're living in a time where women are being so supported and young girls have such amazing opportunities. It's really, really awesome. Um, it's a little bit crazy to me that it's 2019 and we're just starting to see a shift where you're seeing more female leaders, but they're still not nearly enough. And I think that Time's Up has done incredible things. When you look at some of those numbers, it's really mind-boggling how, how the inequality in our society. And so I, I just think that it's really, really amazing to be able to speak to young girls and young boys and to teach boys and young girls to be supportive of each other, to be kind to each other, and to be respectful 
Um, and I think that teaching each other respect is, is so important if we're trying to push for equality in our society. You have to be respectful to one another. I think you are a champion not because you won gold and medals. You're a champion because you're someone who is walking her journey and sharing that in a very inspirational way Thank and you. being very authentic and honest about it, even though you're in the middle of it Thank as well. You. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Wow.